The Taliban banned it, but eight years on, the internet is transforming Afghans' lives. Now on BBC World News, Najee Golami travels from Kabul to Herat and Bamiyan to discover how big an impact the web is having on Afghan society. Afghanistan. These are the images the world sees every day on the news. War, violence, poverty, and a society trapped in the past. But is this the full picture? Away from the headlines, a new Afghanistan is trying to emerge. A civil society full of surprises and eager to embrace the latest technologies. But can the internet really help Afghanistan to become part of the information revolution and join the 21st century? Kabul a city known for many things, but being an online capital connected to the information superhighway is not one of them. I've come back to Afghanistan to look at people who are living online lives and to examine the crucial role the Internet could play in developing this country. <laughs> Masoud Hosseini is a Kabul-based professional photographer. Normally, actually, I'm coming to this part of Kabul, which is the old Kabul, and I just found my subjects no, uh, mostly about the daily life of Afghanistan in here because I can find whatever about the life, the normal life in Kabul here. The old city looks almost medieval, but unknown to many, the whole of Kabul is covered by a massive wireless network. It's one of the few cities in the world to have such internet coverage, but it came about through necessity. Three decades of fighting have left Afghanistan's land-based communications network shattered. For a guy who is young and he's living here, does it make him happier to have internet and connect to the world? Sure, actually. If, I, if you ask about me and my friends, for sure, yes. Because sometimes even happen that the normal, I mean, media in Afghanistan do not work like, uh, I mean, we don't have power or something. Then if you have mobile and internet, so you can check whatever you want in internet with your mobile. Mm -hmm. And then you can go around the world with internet. You can find whatever you want in internet. But unlike Masood, who has a top job at an international news agency, most Kabulis simply can't afford to use the service. The biggest users of the internet are not the Afghan people. It's the international community, it's governments, um, embassies, major companies. You have to consider that the internet in Afghanistan only started in 2002. There was no uh, international connectivity um, other than voice before that time. So it's relatively new compared to the rest of the world. So it's had less time to, to penetrate into, across the country. There needs to be certain infrastructural movements. There needs to be a better generation of power. Uh, there needs to be a cheaper movement of the internet around the country for it to become more ubiquitous, to become more available to the people. Excuse me. The world's media gather for a United Nations press conference in Kabul. It's breaking news and as always, Masood is in the thick of things. The reality is that if internet is cut in Afghanistan for one day, i never be able to work in my job. We will first hear some remarks from uh, the SRSG. Uh, after which the SRSG will be happy to take a few questions. That's been a difficult process. It's been marred by so many problems, not least, as you know, widespread fraud. I cannot prejudge what will be their decisions a few days from now. It's no surprise that journalists are big internet users here. They have to stay in touch with the rest of the world. 
But how keen are ordinary Afghans to get online? In 2001, there was no telecommunication or internet in Afghanistan. But in this short time, 11 million people have taken mobile uh, phone services, which is quite unique. And what I can say is that the same eagerness is there even for internet services. But if Kabul is anything to go by, there is a serious gap between the government's aspiration and reality. Despite being the seat of power, the capital feels insecure. Roadblocks and armed men are everywhere, and the threat of Taliban violence is ever-present. The capital city doesn't even have 24-hour electricity. For Masood, this is all just part of his daily reality. His priority now is to file his photos. So, we just go inside. Is it dangerous for you? Here? Yeah. Not really. What do you want to do now? Just upload my uh, photos. Actually, our internet is really fast mm -hmm. because we pay, uh, I mean, uh, a lot of money for uh, the company. When I take a photo, then I have to send it to somebody who want to publish it or who want to buy it. Yeah, it is in wire, yeah, yeah, thank you, yeah. When it's not internet, so I can, I, I'm not able to do that. So I just have to, f I mean, just sit somewhere and, f I mean, forget about that. You're done, successful, successful. I did my job. Okay, good. But what is it like outside of Kabul? I'm on my way to Herat in western Afghanistan. It's next to Iran and is generally much more stable than Kabul or the south. The city is well known for its classical skyline of minarets and the world famous palace of Herat. But nowadays, these historical landmarks find an echo in the communications towers. Linux versus Windows, open source. This Linux class at Herat University's Faculty of Computer Science shows one possible future. Seeing modern classrooms full of male and female students learning about computer operating systems made me hopeful for Afghanistan's future. Exactly after these two words are the words open source and closed source. Use the internet uh, as other countries are using now for information, for data, for everything for sharing data, for everything we are using nowadays internet. But it's not usual for all the people in Afghanistan. It's more for pro professional people who need internet. Although the university is state-funded, most of these students were from privileged middle-class backgrounds. But even they complained that the price of the internet was beyond their reach. I don't have internet at home because uh, it's too expensive to have an efficient internet in the home. Every hour we should pay something like one dollar between these things. But it's also it's not usable, just maybe Google some takes nothing else. Payment of internet is uh, also high, so we cannot be able to, to pay some, lots of money to, uh, to have access to internet. If I want to have the internet in my home, unfortunately, I shouldn't pay around $100 per month. But uh, it is a high m money for me, and because I'm a student, I don't have enough money to pay for that. And I, I myself really need the internet in my home, but um, unfortunately, I can't have $100 per month just for dial-up internet access seems very expensive by Western standard. But in Afghanistan, with the average income currently around $850 a year, home internet access is effectively a luxury product. In a way, Afghan society is becoming even more divided. It's no longer just about material wealth and poverty, but about information poverty. Jamshid never went to university. Instead, his computer skills 
landed him his well-paid job in an Internet service provider. His company is trying to bring down the price of the Internet for Afghan consumers, and he blames government greed for the high prices here. The Ministry of Communication is the one who is issuing the licenses for ISPs. The first thing, if they want to help Internet grow into everyone's life in Afghanistan, first they have to just decrease the prices, they have to lower the prices of the licenses. Is it really trying to uh, help the uh, business grow or they're only thinking about their own money?